Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to This Week in Magic Online Finance. I'm your host, Chaz Andres. As always, we're gonna get started with the news. And the biggest story of the week, of course, are the ultimate box topper promos that started showing up in people's mailboxes late last week. Not my box, Wizards of the Coast, but you know, mailboxes belonging to other people. Anyway, these cards are awesome. Some of the best modern staples ever printed. Things like Tarmogoyf, Snapcaster Mage, Noble Hierarch, Liana of the Veil. This set looks crazy. And if it is actually a brand new master set, well, the EV is actually probably going to be high enough here to make it worth opening on MTGO, which notoriously is kind of a wasteland for master sets. Of course, this whole thing has been kind of a big tease so far, and we don't even really know how Ultimate Masters is going to be released yet. Well, you probably do, considering the big WotC announcement is going live right around the same time this video is, but that kind of makes it hard for me to weigh in now. What I will say is that if this set ends up being what everybody wants it to be, which is a normal master set, a wide release, 999 MSRP, all the cards you saw spoiled are in it, you know, you can draft it on MTGO as many times as you want, well, that's probably going to lead to continued erosion in the MTGO modern market, at least for the cards that are included in the set. Because as far as cards like Liliana of the Veil and Snapcaster Mage and Tarmogoyf have fallen in recent days, they cannot maintain even their current value. If this Ultimate Master set ends up getting a wide release and it's chock full of value, it's going to depress all of those cards even further. Of course, it's also possible, and I would probably even say likely, that this set doesn't end up on MTGO at all. Maybe it's a Hasbro Toy Shop exclusive, maybe it's literally just a subset of foils that are going to be released as buy a box promos or some other way, but regardless, if the set doesn't end up on MTGO, you're not gonna have to worry about it affecting prices. So, point being, go watch that Hasbro announcement this morning, react accordingly. If the set does end up on MTGO and wide release, you may want to sell some of those staples that you've seen show up in foil on social media recently, and if not, you don't have to really think about it much at all, unless you also play Paper Magic. Let's move on to Gaining Ground, where in standard, it was a Phoenix kind of week. Both Rekindling Phoenix and Arclight Phoenix gained about 7 tickets this week, with Rekindling Phoenix ending up all the way at 38, Arclight Phoenix a little bit further behind but still a very robust 25, making it the most valuable cards in Guilds of Ravnica. And <laughs> this whole thing is kind of ironic considering, you know, back when Guilds of Ravnica was previewed, my reaction to Arclight Phoenix was, yeah, this card seems good, but it's gonna have to compete in that red 4-drop slot with Rekindling Phoenix. And... <sighs> Apparently, the real answer was, who cares, because both cards are incredibly good. At any rate, Rekindling Phoenix is showing up all over the place these days. It's in Boros Angels, which is a deck on the rise, despite the fact that I'm still a little bit skeptical about it. It's in Mono Red Aggro, which is a little bit more mid-rangey than it was at the beginning of the format, but still a very good deck. Most importantly though, it is in Jeskai Control. It's in the sideboard of the deck that just took down Grand Prix New Jersey last weekend. And this is actually an important development, because if Rekindling Phoenix ends up seeing play in the Teferi decks, as well as all of the other red base decks, then I don't see it dropping below 30 or 35 anytime soon. As for Arclight Phoenix, I still don't think we've hit that card's ceiling. There are now multiple good Arclight Phoenix decks in both Standard and Modern, which gives it the profile of about as safe a multi-format staple as it gets. And there's also a Pro Tour next week. And if Is It Drakes ends up being one of the two or three breakout decks of the tournament, which I strongly suspect it will be, then we could be looking at yet another 30 ticket plus Phoenix in standard. Let's move on to modern, where the biggest gainer of the week was Amulet of Vigor, gaining about two tickets from three up to five. And if you look at the price chart, this thing is still pointing straight up at the roof. So I would not be surprised if this one is at least at the seven or eight ticket mark by the time you're watching this video. So why is Amulet of Vigor rising in price now? Well, it has a lot to do with the fact that Amulet Titan won the Star City Games Modern Open in Charlotte last weekend, and that's about the time that Amulet of Vigor started going up in price. But here's the thing, the deck's other major staples haven't really gained value. Azusa Lost But Seeking is pretty much exactly flat to where it has been for months, and Primeval Titan has actually been losing value about a ticket a week since Guilds of Ravnica's release. 
So here's the thing. Either you should not be buying Amulets of Vigor right now, or you should definitely be buying Primeval Titans right now. And I'll let you decide based on what you think the future of the modern market on MTGO is likely to be. Let's move on to our biggest loser. Where in Standard, it was pretty much every card from Golgari Midrange. Vivian Reed, Jade Light Ranger, Veraska, Doom Whisperer, Carnix Tyrant, these cards were all down between three or four tickets this week. And it has a lot to do with the deck's poor showing at Grand Prix New Jersey. Seriously, so many pros were on Golgari coming into this event and none of them made the top eight. So is Golgari dead? Well, probably not. It's a very adjustable deck and it had a massive target on its back heading into that tournament. But we'll find out for sure next week when we see what happens at the standard Pro Tour. If Golgari has a big weekend, you can expect those cards to rebound more or less immediately. If not, they're going to continue to drop. Let's move on to Modern, where the biggest loser this week was Horizon Canopy, dropping another five tickets from 36 down to 31. And this is despite the fact that Humans is having another good showing at Grand Prix Atlanta right now. So, I don't really know what to tell you here. People just are not buying modern cards on Magic Online right now. The market is as slow as I've ever seen it. And I still do expect things to rebound this winter, but we don't seem to be even close to that point yet. This week's sneak is Gemstone Mine, a card that's gained a low key amount of importance in the modern metagame recently. For starters, it's a four of in that Amulet Titan deck that won in Charlotte last week, but it's also showing up in some of the dredge lists, and that deck is the most exciting piece of tech in modern at the moment. It's also worth noting that Gemstone Mine has kind of bucked the financial trend of the past few months, actually gaining ground from 10 up to 16 since the summer, so this is a card that is still on the rise. I don't think I'd go too deep because really nothing in modern is gaining much value right now, but this is a card I can easily see hitting the 20 or even 25 mark before too long. As always, we're going to end the week by taking a look at the MTGO Traders sales data over the past seven days. And this gives us a great picture into which cards are selling the best right now, regardless of price trends. Looking at overall sales by volume, the picture hasn't really changed since last week, or really the week before. Steam Vents, still the best selling card on MTGO, full stop. Is it staples, Golgari staples, things like Lava Coil and Assassin's Trophy, still really selling well despite the fluctuations in the metagame. And the only real thing I can point to here and say definitively is that Modern is still not doing well. Lightning Bolt is the only Modern staple anywhere near the top of this list. Now, in terms of overall sales by price, it's Teferi at the very top, followed by the two Phoenixes, followed by Carnage Tyrant. And it's still kind of wild to me that there aren't any Modern cards near the top of this list considering just how much more expensive they are than standard staples but people just aren't buying modern and look i can't really blame them standard is awesome right now this is definitely the best standard format of the past couple of years and it's all that i want to play too but if you're looking at this list for any sign of a modern bounce back well you're gonna have to look elsewhere that's all I got for you this week. Thank you so much for watching. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed today's content. I'm Chaz Andres. I will see you next Monday morning for another episode of This Week in Magic Online Finance. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel for more awesome NFTG content just like this. And make sure to tap the bell icon to be notified whenever a video is made live. If you want to keep watching content, here are two more videos for you. This video and many others are sponsored by MTGO Traders and Cape Fear Games. Buy and sell digital singles to build your online collection today with MTGO Traders, and get your paper singles, accessories, and much more from Cape Fear Games. Whatever your magic needs, both places have you covered.